Hey, this is part two on inspecting used lenses. This is the 2485 uh, VRG I took off my Nikon D750. This applies to uh, basically every autofocus lens. Some important things uh, you need to check out for on uh, purchasing a uh, used autofocus Nikkor is uh, look for any dents. Now I have a filter on this, but look for any dents along the edge of the lens. This is uh, typical of a drop and uh, also if you can print out a piece of grid sheet paper like if you go to a craigslist sale or if you're at a flea market uh, in other words you have your camera with you that you can actually pop the camera pop the lens on your camera and take a shot of uh, a tight grid just print out a grid shot on an 8 by 10 piece of paper keep it folded up if you're planning on meeting somebody on a used lens or immediately do that that way you can check for misaligned internal elements so this is a common issue on a drop uh, check for drop marks the most uh, prominent ones will usually be on the edge but sometimes they'll actually smack on the side of the lens you won't notice it because it impacts the rubber on uh, either the zoom or the focal ring, uh, the focus ring and then you won't notice that the, the lens has had a bad drop and one of the elements uh, is askew internally. Uh, also on a zoom lens uh, put your ear up next to the lens and make sure you have a foot smooth focus and also check for binding. An issue on a lot of dropped autofocus lenses is binding so uh, binding on uh, the auto on uh, zooming the lens so actually as you're zooming it out you notice like a, a, a tough spot Okay, and if you encounter a tough spot, do not buy it. In other words, you're actually sitting there and you're applying four times as much pressure. Everything's nice and smooth, and boom, you hit a speed bump, and you're having to apply, uh, you know, to get rid of that bump. Do not buy the lens or return it. Now, a very common issue on used autofocus lenses: people have sweaty hands, they're out shooting out in the field, as any pro does. Uh, the rubbers on the the zoom ring and the focus ring will get loose. It's no big deal. You can use rubber cement or super glue to reapply those. Make sure when you're using the super glue that your front element and your rear element are covered because those fumes can very, very easily uh, accumulate on the lens. Look for the autofocus and uh, zoom and VR uh, uh, contact uh, data points right here. They're actually spring loaded. Check them for corrosion and rust. Okay. Obviously, put the uh, lens on your camera. Use it. Actually, zoom out. And actually, if you can actually zoom out your rear element, look in here for internal dust or any issues that the lens is really nasty. What will happen is if there's just a ton of crud in there, someone is not taking very good care of the lens. Now, when you put the lens in your camera, and here's a common issue. Okay, someone is screwed up. And what happens is that the internal gears that are actually driving uh, the autofocus lens are slipping, means they're broken. Some of the actual gear spokes are broken off. When you uh, put it on the, the camera for testing, uh, check for this sound. Or sometimes it'll actually make a buzzing sound. It'll sound like if you hear that, return the lens or do not buy it. This is actually a common issue due to mistreatment. Someone's used the lens wrong, they've dropped it. Uh, the autofocus uh, AFS, the internal uh, uh, drive for the lens has gone bad. Uh, it's either uh, the gears are slipping or someone has abused it. It'll either make one or two sounds. It'll sound like or typically it sounds like this. Okay, if you have that issue while it's trying to seek and autofocus, do not buy the lens and return the lens. These are some important factors to check on the lens. Also, you need to check for the vibrating internal element, which corrects for camera shake. So make sure you check your VR. Okay, you'll actually notice that as you're focusing, you can actually see the picture slightly correct. That's normal. Okay, check for that little bit of jump as the... Uh, VR is correcting. Check both active mode and passive mode, okay, which this one does not have. It just has VR on or off, but any of the new cores do, okay. Stick your lens in manual mode on the camera, okay, and check for manual focus. A lot of people don't do that, okay. You got an autofocus lens, they throw it on the camera, you know, they'll sit there and they'll zoom it, and they'll let the camera use internals for focusing the lens but stick the lens in manual okay and please manually focus the lens make sure this is not binding okay if this is binding or if you get a grinding sound it'll sound like instead of like where you got an infernal internal focusing issue it'll sound like as you're actually turning the lens to focus it it'll, you can actually hear that okay I mean it's it's pretty audible it's not like you have to put your ear up next to the lens to hear it and also if it's binding either on the zoom or especially 
on the autofocus ring if it's binding what will happen is you start to turn it uh, turn uh, the uh, the uh, the focus ring on your uh, current uh, G series or uh, D series lens you'll actually see it that the the ring will buckle it'll actually lift up and make a ridge as you turn it if it's actually catching you'll notice that'll be very apparent you'll actually encounter uh, a resistance and then you'll see a buckling right here okay now just very very slight as you begin to turn if you see a buckling that's normal but if you actually turn it and you encounter resistance and you start to see a bulge in the uh, the autofocus ring on your lens it's been dropped or abused or the gears are starting to go bad someone's dropped it abused it um, God knows where they've stored it, okay? Because most people don't know, not only do people know how to grade a lens, they just certainly do not know how to take care of a lens. Obviously, the same thing applies regarding mold, fungus, and also, very, very importantly, check for it. Now, on the modern lenses, you really don't have to worry about the oil on the aperture blades like you do the older AI and AES lenses, but obviously, you check for mold and fungus. And obviously you need to check your aperture blades, make sure that they're nice and springy. Okay, so these are some of the specific issues to autofocus lenses you need to check when buying some off Craigslist or if you bought something that just shipped to you via eBay. Because people do not know how to check a lens. They're like, oh, the lens is awesome, I just took a picture with... It's like, yeah, there's fungus in the air and then the zoom, uh, you know, the zoom is binding and, uh, you know, I hear a rattle and this, you know, it's like, they, they don't know. It's like, oh, it's a beautiful shape. You know, I'm going to list this on eBay. It's a great lens. Buy this lens. It's ex and it turns out it's not an excellent lens because nobody knows what they're doing when it comes to grading. I mean, basically nobody does. I mean, it just, it's just a mystery. It's like, well, it mounts on the camera and it looks like it's an excellent shape. So I'm going to list it as excellent on eBay. Well, that's great until the person that bought it ends up getting screwed and they found out they bought a defective lens that's got some issues. And uh, You know, that's happened to me more than a few times. I mean... Usually my spider senses are really, really, really good. I haven't had it happen to me in a long time, but once in a while I'll take a gamble on like a, just an insanely expensive lens that somebody picked up in a garage sale or something. It's like, I'll gamble 40 bucks, and you know, it turns out that, you know, it's, it's a loser. And uh, it's like, oh, geez, you know. Uh, but anyway, you got eBay and PayPal protection, so that's important. This is part two on checking autofocus characteristics on used lenses, things that you need to look for but probably did not consider. The only one thing that, as I mentioned, is not a worry and typical, very typical to encounter, is uh, loose rubbers on uh, your uh, zoom ring and on your uh, your autofocus ring. That's really very common. All you have to do is just lift it up and use some rubber cement and actually take a piece of the paintbrush using the rubber cement and stick it underneath there, reapply it. It's no big deal. Sometimes they'll actually wear out some, I mean I've seen more than a few and you'll, you'll see them too, that the rubber is so stretched out, I mean even in its condition. Well, you have a huge loop there, and the Nikon actually made these specifically. If you got a huge loop of, uh, of loose rubber on your lens, all you have to do is just see how loose it is and cut out a section here, okay, to where it's loose. I mean, you got a really loose bubble on it. Just cut out the section you know that you need, reapply it, and make sure it fits perfectly, and then you just toss away that extra section because it's stretched out so much, and then reapply a rubber cement, and you're good as new, okay? That's an easy fix, and uh, if you can get a lens cheap enough with uh, loose rubbers on the focus ring or on the zoom ring, then, you know, it's no big, no big deal. You can fix that just, just like that, no problem. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'm glad I made you folks so happy on a lot of lenses, a lot of positive comments recently, and uh, actually the positive comments, I'm not used to that stuff, I mean, at all. I mean, not in life in general, so it's both extremely welcome and uh, at the same time extremely odd because I'm not used to it, but... I'm glad I could help anybody, and uh, thanks for everybody, and uh, y'all are awesome, and uh, let me know uh, what I could do, and uh, get back to making some more videos and working on stuff. Okay, thanks.